Welcome to episode two of The Creepy Crawler. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, what we fed the creepy crawlers, how we got it started, um, maintenance, um, a schedule, basically a calendar of what day one looked like to day 15 of harvest. Um, we're going to talk a lot about what we fed um, the black soldier flies, um, um, how we maintain the pods, which is a big part of this. Um, so we're going to start off. I actually purchased all my black soldier fly larvae as a compost uh, purchase through Symptom uh, Black Soldier Flies out of California. There's a few series of choices you have with the website. You can go to eggs, uh, full mature grubs, or what they call compost grubs, which is the first day after um, they're, they're hatched from the eggs, they end up being actual grubs. So I purchased about 180,000 per pod. Um, it was quite the expense, um, but what we looked at um, with that is that you have to start right away. You had a lot of soldier flies, and if you read a lot of the manual, the manual states, um, you know, to start with about 100,000, 60 to 100,000 per pod to get them going. Um, so I went a little overboard, um, but I just really wanted to get a good start, especially because we would be colonizing parents. So I left about a 20% that I would actually bury into the soil um, to become hatched and to become actual flies. So the first step was um, they ship them in these uh, one quart containers, um, really easy to deal with, had holes, and I added, uh, I think, four uh, quarts per bin. Now that gave me a thing you can see that I, um, my substrate is spent, gra spent grain and coffee. Um, once again, if you can get away from spent grain, um, use coffee grounds. If you have to use spent grain, use very little of it. Um, once again, I used about a five gallon bucket to 10 gallons of buckets of spent grain and the spent grain did not get consumed fast enough so it really heated up. Um, and I could see that was really not uh, an ideal situation because the moisture from the breakdown spent grain started getting into the chore and the chore in some pods actually started to break down a little bit and eventually the black soldier flies ended up eating them. So with your substrate, um, I would definitely get in contact with um, Starbucks, uh, please do not support them, uh, but you can get the coffee grounds from there. Um, that is the number one substrate to use for the black soldier flies. Um, you can mix in spent grain, but once again, strong warning, uh, do not use that much. I would use probably about a half of a five gallon bucket, maybe one gallon to two gallons per pod. I know it seems like there's not much there, but believe me, the breakdown um, really caused some issues with us in the, in the process of um, building this. So um, as you can see in the video, we were adding um, each quart to um, the bins and this at this stage they are going to be right after egg. Um, they hatch from an egg to become a grub. It's called a composting um, black soldier fly I think is um, how they list it on the website. The website I used was called Symptom Black Soldier Flies. Um, I did spend quite a bit of money. This is where a lot of huge costs is going to start out with. Uh, but with 180000 per bin, um, I have figured a 20% um, would be buried into the soil to actually become flies or parents themselves. Um, that's what I put. I guess that's quite a lot, um, but due to my season here in Wisconsin, we had really, summer kind of have never really hit us. So I had a lot of loss due to the fact that I think the temperature was so crazy. So with the start of the substrate, um, it just happened to be on the same timing that I ended up butchering about 300 chickens. Um, I went to my local butcher and she saved all the innards for us. Um, you can put in heads and feet as well, um, but they don't break down as quickly. So what I did with 300 birds is I took all the innards and put them at the same time I inoculated um, my black soldier flies and ran into some serious problems. Um, that was way, way too much uh, food for them to begin with. They're very small and cannot consume that quickly. So I had a very, very awful odor for about, uh, I don't know, about four or five days, um, which uh, was very unpleasant to work with. Um, but um, the sense of feeding them is I am using a waste product that would normally get wasted and I'm creating protein from it. Um, in the end of this video, you're going to see uh, we will feed them again. Um, I have fed them buckets about five gallon buckets split up between the eight of them with innards which worked out really well for us um, and I did that about once a week 
Um, so to begin with, do not overfeed um, your grubs when you first start. They do not need much going on past um, the substrate. Um, if you do go past the substrate, I would just do some whatever kitchen scraps you have laying around. So due to the quantity that I purchased, um, the shipment did come in in two separate dates, about four days apart. And on the second shipment, after my substrate and my chicken guts were added to the pods, I did add cow manure. I added cow manure, which is actually um, from where the end of our parlor ends and our wash down. Um, my theory behind that was that you would have a lot more organic matter inside that cow manure than in a bedded pack, and I didn't want to dry the bedded pack out right away. Um, so what I did, I just took my skid stir, got a big bucket, and added about two, um, two to three um, shovelfuls full of cow manure um, that I mixed in when I added the second group of black soldier flies. So with this project, um, we have been talking a little bit about design um, here in the kitchen, and. Um, a big shout out to Rudy who is doing all the editing for us in the video um, you know a design which would be to think about is to actually build this what I have is a shed but to build it um, almost flush or I would say probably 12 inches above the pod and then have um, the roof actually hinge um, in that case you know you could actually lift it up and then you know access it from the top I thought it was a really great idea um, but what my reasoning for bringing this up is that this project is uh, very hands-on and very dirty um, so when you use um, a waste product um, and you create this into protein um, one of this um, the differences of paying for organic feed that comes in the truck and you, you feed it daily um, is that the maintenance is a lot more labor intense when it comes to um, feeding them in hindsight you know this is a dirty job um, this is what some of the downfalls would be um, as a farmer or if you are a farmer yourself you know that this is uh, not very uncommon for us um, but that is one word of caution getting into this project that you um, understand what you're getting yourself into okay so about three days after um, the second batch came we're looking at about day seven um, I had a bin which was a feed bin which was open and uh, when the truck came to fill it up they left the bottom open I ended up having about 300 pounds of grain um, which was basically spoiled at that point um, due to the fact that the concrete pad we had on was really wet so with the spent um, feed grain um, I put that into a trash can and I ended up soaking it um, in waste milk that we had from our cows and I basically made a slop out of it and mixed it um, I had a very great result with this um, for the black soldier flies absolutely loved it um, but I did uh, notice you had a little bit more of crusting over um, that's one topic we're going to talk about is if you don't aerate your pile enough um, you're going to have something called crusting which is basically when the organic matter gets so hard nothing can get through it um, and in the video um, you'll see us using just a claw usually a three prong garden claw and every day or every couple days we would go and aerate it okay so we in, we started to feed the proto protopod or the creepy crawler um, we had it in our yard um, we do do pizza on the farm and agritourism and um, with this about day five day five I ended up moving the protopod into somewhat of the field um, to get it to keep it close to the farm uh, just because of experimenting and trying to go I was not in the pasture right away um, you could definitely put it in pasture with chickens um, the first day you start inoculating but there is no activity for at least 15 days um, you're seeing the first um, stages of um, breakdown and production of your black soldier flies um, on top when you see um, I have a burlap sack on um, that burlap sack um, will get very um, I guess kind of not chewed up but it gets pretty nasty um, I just want a word of caution of that when you start going um, that the theory behind that is that that's supposed to help keep out common house flies um, in the video you can clearly see the the house flies um, loved the creepy crawler project uh, but once again that was because I ended up overfeeding them so do not overfeed them so you're looking at the first stages um, I used my hand um, to kind of break um, the pile apart to get some aeration to kind of film and see. Um, this is probably day five. 
Okay, so um, with the burlap sack, when it's when you see it still new and starting, um, you'll see other organic matter that we throw into the, into the protopods. We did eggshells, and uh, we run a small grocery store. Um, so any organic matter, literally any organic matter, we would throw into the piles. Um, and at around um, I don't know day six and day seven, um, I would just start adding more and more and more organic matter, which again really kind of is the wrong thing to do. You want to feed enough to them to survive and to be happy rather than overfeeding them because then you will have an abundance of houseflies. About day 10 is when I started to see a lot of action starting. Um, as you can see in each pile, um, when we uncover, there is a massive amount of black soldier flies. Um, so by day 10, there was really no smell. Um, the smell had kind of gotten away. Um, or had kind of dis dissipated at that point um, just due to the fact that the organic matter was consumed by the black soldier flies. Um, in the video you're going to see that there are small larvae that are attached to the burlap and that is common house fly so um, just be aware that that is an issue that we had to deal with. Um, in the most cases when we started to get very active the house flies would actually crawl up the sides and end up harvesting themselves just like the black soldier flies. So I really didn't see an issue with it. Another trick of the trade was is the burlap sack um, will end up getting saturated with whatever is getting um, broken down in the pod and the ho common houseflies will either lay eggs on or buy it. So what I would do is I would take the burlap sack at the beginning and throw it on the ground and the chickens were trained to just absolutely love <laughs> the fact that there was millions of housefly larvae on those. So there's a trick for you. So in the video, you're gonna see that uh, we had another skid loader bucket. Um, this point, I did some experimenting. I had about uh, 20 to 15 gallons of, of waste milk. Um, I slopped it again with um, my grain that I had left in the bucket from the beginning and as well as cow manure. Um, I did it slop just due to the fact that um, I noticed a lot of crust crusting over with just milk and when you add just waste milk, you know, with the drainage system, it just it completely went right through the system and really didn't benefit from it. So at that point I ended up mixing um, with other organic matter and applying it or feeding them at a lower rate about every other day to every third day. So that concludes episode two. Uh, please check out our Facebook at Grassway Organics, our website at www.grasswayorganics.com. Uh, please share and like this video. Thank you.